What if I told you that the entire country of Australia went to war with emus, and lost? In 1932, in the midst of the Great Depression, emus were a pest that were destroying the subsistence farms of the Australian outback. The problem did a decently large impact on the nation's economy. In response, the government decided that they would form a task force to exterminate the emus in affected areas. The task force was sent out with jeeps, and a machine gun to wipe out the emu populations and to prevent further crop destruction. Only a small number of emus died, and the task force had to return home. The emus still continued to destroy crops until better fencing was developed. If you'd like to learn more, check out the links in the description. Have you ever heard of Justinian? Justinian was arguably one of the most famous Eastern emperors of the Roman Empire. By Justinian's reign, the Roman Empire had been reduced to only the eastern half of the empire. Justinian was wildly ambitious and dreamed of restoring the Roman Empire to how it had been in the classical era. Justinian completed multiple building projects in Constantinople such as the Great Hagia Sophia. Justinian began conquests of North Africa, Southern Spain, and Italy, reforming much of the empire. One of the first emergences of the Black Death also emerged in the form of Justinian's plague. A huge portion of people died, and Justinian caught the plague and his wife Theodora reigned in his absence. Justinian miraculously woke up and became one of the longest reigning Roman emperors. If you enjoy it, please like and subscribe. It would really help. Did you know that in the year 1325, a full-scale war was fought over a bucket? Well, the war wasn't entirely about the bucket, the bucket war was a conflict fought between the city-states of Bologna and Modena in modern-day Italy. During the time period, the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor were fighting over control and influence, a topic too complex to explain here. Modena was a supporter of the Holy Roman Empire, and Bologna a supporter of the Pope. Because of the split sides they went to war. During the war, Modena looted a bucket from Bologna greatly offending them. Modena won the war, and is in possession of the same bucket even today. Check out the description if you'd like to learn more. Have you ever heard of the ominous attack of the dead men? The attack of the dead men was a remarkable and brutal event occurring in August of 1915. The German forces on the Eastern Front in Poland began an attack on the Osoyek fortress, the Russian forces valiantly defended the fortress until the Germans released gas onto the fort. In an absolutely stunning and horrific event, as the Germans began to celebrate their victory, the garrison of the fort began to charge out literally dying as they moved. It was so utterly horrifying to the Germans that they ran away, some getting stuck in their own barbed wire. If you'd like to learn more, like and subscribe. What would happen if the largest and wealthiest French colony in the world gained its independence from its own slaves? In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Saint Domingue was the largest and most profitable colony in the French colonial empire, the colony produced massive amounts of highly sought after sugar, coffee, and indigo, however these goods were produced on the backs of slaves. After the French Revolution began, a series of armed revolts by the slave populations engulfed the island, in the end the rich colored faction and the slaves of Saint Domingue formed Haiti, and the small and big whites were exiled from the island. Napoleon Bonaparte did attempt to retake the island, and re-establish slavery, but he ultimately failed. After the revolution ended, France lost its largest colony, and Haiti was formed by the largest and most successful slave revolt in history. If you'd like to learn more check out the links in the subscription. What would happen if two sailors from the largest corporation on earth killed a Chinese civilian? Well, how about two different major conflicts resulting in the decline of the largest Chinese state in history to date, as well as the formation of Hong Kong? The Opium Wars were two major conflicts found between the British East India Company, and the Qing Dynasty. The Opium Wars were caused by an extremely complex list of factors, but long story short, in the 19th century the trade input from China was crucial to the imperial economy of Britain, and after the Chinese imposed strict sanctions the British imported massive amounts of Indian opium into China leading to war. 
Even though the Chinese won the war, the foundation of Hong Kong and the economic impacts of the war lead to the decline of the dynasty. If you would like to learn more about this complex topic, look into the creators in the description. What if I told you that in 1900 the world's great powers of Britain, the US, Germany, Russia, Japan, and more all united for one battle against the Qing dynasty? In 1900, the Boxer Rebellion was engulfing China, the Boxer Rebellion was a large-scale anti-Christian, colonial, and international uprising in China. When the rebellion reached Peking, modern-day Beijing, they besieged the various colonial legations. The legations consisted of roughly eight nations, with the French embassy being attacked first. The siege was defended largely by stationed colonial forces in Peking, and was ended by reinforcements eventually reaching Peking to relieve the trapped soldiers. For 55 days colonial forces fought together as brothers with whom would be mortal enemies in only 14 years at the start of World War I. Check out the links in the description if you'd like to learn more. What if I told you that the already established Crusader states of the Levant would fall less than 100 years later to a single man? The Third Crusade began in 1189 and ended in 1192, the Crusade was called upon due to the expanding threat of Saladin's Caliphate. Saladin captured various Crusader cities, most notably being Jerusalem after the disastrous Battle of Hoti, and as a result of the loss the Pope in Europe called a Crusade. The first Crusaders to arrive were with Frederick Barbarossa, then the legendary Richard the Lionheart of Francia during the invasion of the Holy Land, Richard took Cyprus, and eventually landed on the shorts of the Levant due to stalling, and major losses on both sides, peace was made between Saladin and the Crusaders. Jerusalem was lost, but the Crusader state remained in a smaller form. If you'd like to learn more, check out the links in the description. What if I told you? that in the middle of World War I, soldiers from both sides of the trenches on the Western Front would stop fighting, and celebrate Christmas together as human beings. On the Christmas of 1914, the British and French lines are singing their favorite Christmas carols, most notably Silent Night, the Germans do the same, in the morning the sides come out of their trenches, exchange goods, give gifts, and even play football. The Christmas truce was caused by a host of factors, such as the desire to be home for Christmas, just as they had been told months before, the weather invoking a depressing mood, and a variety of other reasons. The event in the middle of one of the bloodiest conflicts in history demonstrated that soldiers from each side are human beings, placed in a desperate situation, and just for a day and a night, they celebrated together as brothers. If you would like to learn more check out the links in the description. One of the most famous events in recent human history, were the Crusades. The Crusades were a series of wars that were enacted during a time of relative European peace to expel Muslim rulers of different areas, but the Holy Land, modern-day Israel, was the most sought-after territory of the Crusades. The First Crusade was led by Peter the Hermit, with sub-armies consisting of four regional Crusader forces. The Crusades also included a disastrous People's Crusade where common peasantry attempted to go to the Holy Land, they pillaged their own Christian lands and eventually all died or went home. The main Crusaders force managed to take the Holy Land and form the Crusader states, that would only list for a few centuries the First Crusade was followed by roughly eleven other Crusades, the notable Third Crusade, and the Constantinople sacking Fourth Crusade. If you're interested in learning more about the Crusades, check out the links in the description. Have you ever wondered why Russia owns Kaliningrad, that little piece of land north of Poland and west of Lithuania? Kaliningrad was formerly known as Königsberg, and it was a major part of Prussia, the state that would go on to form Germany. After the Treaty of Versailles, the German Weimar Republic was formed and split the land in two. After Germany's loss in World War II, the land like many countries are it was annexed into the Soviet Union. As the Soviet Union began its collapse, the question of access to the Baltic Sea and its warm water came up, so Russia pondered the annexation of Lithuania, but ultimately decided to annex the now Russo Kaliningrad leading to the exclave we all know now today. Kaliningrad is a strategically important place, as it is one of Russia's only naval access points that's not Arctic. 
If you'd like to learn more check out the links in the description. Have you ever wondered how the United States acquired the territory or Puerto Rico? Since 1898 the island of Puerto Rico has been a commonwealth of the United States. The people of the territory have advocated for statehood as they pay taxes, but are not represented in Congress. But how did Puerto Rico become part of the US? In 1898 the, potentially staged, sinking of the USS Maine occurred, and the US and Spain went to war, as a result of the peace the US acquired the Philippines, and notably Puerto Rico. As of today, Puerto Rico still remains a territory of the United States, and groups still actively advocate for statehood due to the taxation without representation occurring there, as well as the need for greater disaster recovery funding. If you want to learn more check out the links in the description. Have you ever wondered why the city of Washington DC isn't a US state? Ever since its founding, Washington DC has been distinctly unique in comparison to other cities, it lies largely outside of rule from Virginia, and Maryland, and it is directly affected by Congress. Washington DC also has no congressional representatives, creating taxation without representation just like I Puerto Rico. So why hasn't the city become its own state? Well, for one, politics is a major factor. There is a fierce opposition from many political groups, motives of which are far too complicated to explain here. Two, is the potential discrepancy within the Constitution. And three, is the logistical factor that DC wouldn't be able to rely on other states for water and supplies. If you'd like to learn more, check out the links in the description. Did you know that in 1969 a war was fought over football? In the 1960s the countries of El Salvador and Honduras were having a refugee crisis. The people of the countries were losing their jobs to American banana companies taking up the industry. Due to the rising tensions the countries loomed closer to war by the day. But as tensions rose, the 1970 Mexico World Cup qualifying games began. With each game, the people of both countries began to increasingly riot, and harass each other. When El Salvador won the game for the qualifiers, the Honduran riots got out of control, the El Salvador declared war. El Salvador did air raids on strategic points and pushed into Honduran land, after raid to Honduras arrived a stalemate began, and they were forced to have peace. Casualties were in the thousands because of a war caused partially by a game. Check out the description if you'd like to learn more.